Hey, Christ United Kids, are you ready for another crazy, crazy story from the book of Daniel? Today, we're going to be in the book of Daniel chapter 5. So, let me catch you up on what's happened. In chapter 4, King Nebuchadnezzar actually dies. And it's a really crazy story. And so, if you have some time, open it up and read it. And you're not going to believe what happened to him. He actually ended up being like a cow and was eating grass. He went really, really insane until he realized and recognized that God is the only God. All right. So, King Neb is dead and his son, King Belshazzar, is um, the new king of Babylon. All right, so let's check out what happens to him. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles and his wives and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem and the king and his nobles and his wives and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of the gold, silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. This is where it gets crazy, guys. I want you to imagine this, okay? First of all, those goblets that they were drinking from were actually from the temple. They were God's holy objects. And then they were drinking from them and not even talking about God or giving honor to God. Instead, they were honoring other gods. All right. Verse five. Imagine this in your head. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote, as it wrote. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. I don't know about you guys, but if I was at dinner and all of a sudden a human hand started writing a message on a wall, I think I would freak out a little bit. I think that would be super, super scary. And it's probably very smart of the king to be afraid. So this is what's crazy. The hand was writing in a language that the king didn't know. So the king summoned in verse seven, his enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. And he said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck. And he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then all of the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar, became even more terrified and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. No one knew what it meant. But guess who comes into the story now? That's right, Daniel. The queen, hear, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles, came into the banquet hall. May the king live forever, she said. Don't be alarmed, don't look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom. Like that, of, like that of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. He did this because Daniel, whom the king called Bel Belteshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding, and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult, difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. So Daniel was brought before the king, and the king said to him, Are you Daniel? one of the exiles that my father brought to the king from, from Judah. I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you and that you have insight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and the enchanters were brought before me to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they could not explain it. Now I have heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around your neck and you will be made third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered to the king, you can keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. All right, so then if we keep going, verses 18 all the way through, um, basically Daniel explains everything that happened to, to, to Nebuchadnezzar. And then at the very end, it says, um, it says until, so go to verse 21. 
he's talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like an ox, and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and sets over them anyone he wishes. But you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all of this. Instead, you've set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from his temple brought to you, and you and your nobles and your wives and your concubines drank wine from them. You praised the gods of silver and gold and bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. Therefore, he sent the hand and wrote the inscription. This is the inscription that was written. Mene, mene, tikal, parson. Here's what the words mean. Many, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tikal, you have been weighed on the scales and found a wanting. Paris, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the, and the Parisians. Then at Belteshire's command, Daniel was clothed in purple and chained and placed around his neck and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler of the kingdom. But guess what happened to him in verse 30? That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Guys, not only is this story unbelievable, but we have a lot to learn from it. Number one is the same thing we've been learning through the entire book. There is only one true God, and that is the God that we worship, that we praise. And if we don't give him honor and we don't give him glory and we just forget about him, then there are consequences just like there are here. We need to always give honor and praise to the God who created us, who created this entire earth. The other thing is we need to make sure that we're not full of pride. We need to be humble and humble our hearts to God and make sure that we're always acknowledging him. So let's pray right now for that. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much, God. We thank you for the unbelievable story of Daniel and for the amazing things that you did. Um, the amazing, amazing things that you did and that you, and that you showed us through this book. God, we pray that we would always give you honor and glory for who you are, that we would always worship only you, that there would be nothing in our lives more important than you. And all God's children said, amen. All right, guys, tomorrow is Big House, and we have another crazy story that happens to Daniel. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.